Good evening, everyone. Seeing a lot of folks joining in. We'll give it uh, just a couple of minutes to let folks uh, have some leeway in their, their joining time and if they have Zoom difficulties, because we know that happens a lot. Um, and we'll get started in just a few minutes. All right, I think we will go ahead and get started. Uh, so welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening for our virtual cooking demonstration. Uh, we are really excited to have everyone here. Uh, I'm going to start off really quickly just with a brief explanation of what you can do here in the Zoom. So at the end, we are going to have a Q&A session with our chefs. Uh, so uh, if you have a question, please feel free to put that into our Q&A function. You should have a little button down at the bottom of your screen that says Q&A with a couple of little uh, voice uh, blurb uh, boxes. Uh, just click on that and put in a question whenever you have it. Uh, it doesn't, you don't have to wait until the end. You can put it in when it comes into your brain so it doesn't leave before, you, uh, uh, before we get to the Q&A part. Um, but when we get there, I will pull that up, uh, read off any of the questions that we have in there, and our chefs will answer them for you. Uh, also, if you are interested in asking a question out loud during the Q&A session, we do have an ability for you to do that as well. Uh, when we get to that point, um, I'll just ask that anyone who wants to ask their question out loud raise their hand. You should have a raise hand button at the bottom of your screen as well. Uh, when you do that, I'll be able to unmute you uh, so that you can ask your question uh, and get an answer. Um, Otherwise, uh, we are recording this. So if you're not able to stay for the whole time, keep an eye out for uh, YouTube videos of it on uh, the A20 YouTube channel and on the Veg Michigan YouTube channel. Um, and with that, I think we'll go ahead and get into it. Um, so uh, as you all are most likely aware, this is part of our plant-based challenge week. Uh, this is a really great um, per, uh, project program uh, that was put on primarily by um, a group of our A20 ambassadors, including Avni Rao, who uh, you can see is with us today, and a few of the other ambassadors are here as well, I believe, in the audience. Um, this group of ambassadors uh, decided to do a plant-based challenge um, as their uh, final project after completing their uh, ambassador training uh, to be A20 ambassadors, which means that they go out into our community and talk to folks about uh, the A20 plan and what we're doing sustainability-wise with the city. Um, and they are a great group of folks, um, and we're really excited that they chose this project. Um, so uh, we at the Office of Sustainability and Innovations, uh, including myself, um, uh, have been helping them out uh, with the program, uh, as well as um, Olivia and uh, her colleagues at Veg Michigan, uh, which is a great nonprofit that's been a huge help in putting all this together. Uh, so with that, I will pass it over to Olivia. Thanks so much, Sean. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks again, Sean, and to OSI, the a20 ambassadors of the city of Ann Arbor for having us here for this demo. My name is Olivia, as Sean said, and I'm the media and outreach manager at Veg Michigan. 
Um, if you're unfamiliar with us, real quick, Veg Michigan is a nonprofit organization focused on promoting the environmental health and ethical benefits of plant-based eating by offering a wide range of fun activities for learning, socializing, and trying new delicious foods. We host educational programs, organize the Michigan Spring Veg Fest and the Fall Veg Fest, send out a newsletter every month, have a YouTube channel with recipes, presentations, and more, and have given out more than 2,000 bags of free plant-based foods for our 30-day pledge program that encourages members of the community to add more plant-based meals to their daily routines. And as I mentioned before, our Fall Veg Fest, our second largest event of the year is coming up in just a couple of weeks. So definitely join us for that. It'll be from 10.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. on September 25th at Riley Park in downtown Farmington. The festival will have a wide variety of savory and sweet plant-based eats, sustainable shopping, live entertainment, and more. There'll be over 35 vendors, lots of good food, et cetera, and admission is free. So that'll be a really fun day. So come out if you wanna try some new food, join us for that. And if you wanna support our work, please consider becoming a Veg Michigan member. Your membership helps keep our 30-day pledge, presentations, and events like VegFest free for everyone. And we have three levels of membership, but the basic membership is just $20 a year. And to become a member, you can just go to vegmichigan.org and click join. And then you can also learn more about Veg Michigan, our fall Veg Fest, the whole list of vendors, et cetera, and our other programs and events by going to vegmichigan.org or by following us on Instagram or Facebook at Veg Michigan. On our social media, we promote all of our upcoming events. We do a lot of monthly raffles where you can win prizes from local businesses and gift cards to local restaurants to try some new food. We highlight our favorite places to find plant-based food around Michigan and more. So definitely give us a follow there and stay in touch with us throughout your plant-based journey. We're here for you. We're here to help give advice, whatever you need. Okay. And now I'm really excited to introduce our presenters for this evening. Vicki Brett Gock is a sugar-free, oil-free certified personal chef, master certified vegan lifestyle coach, and plant-based culinary instructor, and is the author of the Plant-Based for Life cookbook, Deliciously Simple Recipes to Nourish, Comfort, Energize, and Renew. Vicki is a graduate of Dr. McDougall's Start Solutions Certification Program and is Forks Over Knives Plant-Based Certified. Vicki is trained in nutrition for a healthy heart and in dietary therapy for reversing common diseases and holds certificates in plant-based nutrition through the T. T Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies in wellness counseling through Cornell University and in culinary coaching through Harvard Medical School and the Institute of Lifestyle Medicine. As a coach, Vicki works with individual clients, often helping them reverse health challenges and chronic conditions and teaches whole food plant-based cooking classes to groups of all sizes with a focus on helping people learn how to make eating healthy easy. And Vicki is the creator of the Ann Arbor Vegan Kitchen blog and her recipes have been featured in the McDougall newsletter, Center for Nutrition Studies newsletter, and in multiple magazines and cookbooks. Stay connected with Vicki at annarborvegankitchen.com for new recipes as soon as they are published and for additional details about her new cookbook. And on that note, real quick, we are very excited to be raffling off one of Vicki's new cookbooks at the end of the demo. So be sure to stay until the end to see if you are the winner. And then Michelle Gallo is a certified health and wellness coach, certified plant-based professional, ACSM certified exercise physiologist, and a whole food plant-based culinary instructor. She is certified in holistic nutrition and holds certificates in culinary coaching from Harvard Medical School and the Institute for Lifestyle Medicine, ACLM Lifestyle Medicine for Coaches, T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies and Plant-Based Nutrition, and is Forks Over Knives Plant-Based Certified. She is a conference coordinator for the nonprofit Plant-Based Prevention of Disease. So thank you so much, Vicki and Michelle, for being here with us tonight. We're really excited to see the delicious food you're about to cook. We wish we could taste it in person, but I know many of us will be making the recipes soon after we watch your demo. So thanks so much again. And Michelle, I will turn it over to you to get us started. All right, thank you so much for having us. We're really happy to be here. Uh, tonight, I'm doing things a little bit differently than usual because I uh, had a little run in with one of my dogs and I'm post operative, so I'm a little bit limited. I can do things, but it's just a little unorthodox uh, maneuvering that I don't need anybody to have to go through. So, tonight, my first dish is ratatouille. It's a classic dish that's made so many different ways. And the way I do it, I, uh, I use the eggplant. 
I have the zucchini. You can use yellow squash. You could use a little bit of each. Uh, tomatoes, onion, uh, green pepper, garlic, fresh thyme, and bay leaf. So now if you don't have the, the fresh thyme, you can use dry. And the rule of thumb is for every, it's like one third the dry for every, uh, so like one tablespoon of the fresh, you'd use one teaspoon. So one third the amount of the dry food because the dry is, uh, the spices are concentrated. So I already cut it up. Now you can do it different ways. You could cut up the zucchini and eggplant and roast them. You could kind of roast everything, but the way I did it, I, I diced the eggplant, the zucchini, I, all the vegetables really. And then I, I cooked them. I sauteed the eggplant separately, took that out, zucchini separately. And then I added, I put the onions in the pan, got those uh, sauteing for a while. I don't use oil. So I used a little vegetable broth to deglaze the pan in between each thing, each food, and then uh, added the garlic and the herbs, toast them, let them get a little fragrant from the heat before adding the tomatoes in. And uh, then I added the other vegetables back in, then pepper, and then I added the cooked vegetables back in and just let it sit. Now, the longer I like brought it to a simmer and then turn it down and let it just uh, so it was on low for quite a while. You can go at least 20 minutes if you want it to have more shape, like the individual pieces are still pretty much in the same form. Then you go for more like the 20 minutes. Do cook it at least 20 minutes, but you can leave it on the stove on low for about an hour and a half, which is what I did because I like it to get silkier and all melted together like a nice stew. So oh, at the end of it, I did put in some fresh basil, about a um, quarter cup packed. So I'm just going to show you what this looks like. Smells yummy. If you are avoiding nightshades, you probably wouldn't want this, but I've also, I. I haven't really found anything that you have to avoid nightshades, but if that's what your doctor told you or that's how you feel, then I'm not going to tell you you should have them anyway. I'm going to put a little bit of fresh basil on top. You can serve this with you know, any grain that you like, potato or a side dish, whatever, and there you go. Finished dish. Okay, so off to you, Vicki. Thank you, Michelle. That actually looks so beautiful. And I absolutely love ratatouille. It's such a great harvest, late summer um, dish that can be used in so many ways. I love that too. So um, I'm making, um, it, actually ratatouille would be great in what I'm making today as well. Um, I'm calling it a happy power bowl. And it's just really just kind of a combination of lots of delicious cooked and raw foods that can be definitely um, used as sort of a template for you to add and subtract whatever you've got in your own kitchen, whatever our favorites, um, whatever you have on hand, whatever you maybe want to make ahead uh, to plan to use in this bowl. But it's just basically kind of a variation on a grain bowl or a Buddha bowl. And what I'm using is kind of become kind of a favorite combination. And so I'm doing a variation on my very favorite. So I'm starting with some sweet potatoes and I use, and I end up using, you know, I'm using like kind of a nice um, serving size bowl for a single main dish serving. Uh, about half of a cup of sweet potatoes. You could use butternut squash or some other kind of nice starchy vegetable. I've actually just cooked this in the microwave and I've got about a half of a cup here of sweet potatoes that have been already steamed in the microwave. You could um, put this into a pressure cooker, or bake it in the oven, whatever way you wanna prepare this. And then I'm just basically kind of lining up vegetables around a bowl to create a nice circle of wonderful flavors. And the secret for me of trying to create um, this kind of combination is to have a nice, com a, a nice variety of both textures, flavors, and colors, because I just think it makes it kind of fun. So next I'm putting in 
you could either put in brown rice or black rice. And I actually have a combination here of half black and half brown rice, which is just delicious together. It's kind of a nutty, um, grainy, just kind of delicious sort of combination. And because of the black rice, the brown rice turns kind of purple and it's just full of nutrients and wonderful stuff. And then to that now I'm adding some red cabbage, just some shredded purple cabbage. I'm gonna put this next to it on the other side. Could use green cabbage or any other kind of, you know, green that you like, for example, just romaine lettuce or something else crunchy. This raw addition is just a nice texture um, with these other flavors. And now I'm doing using some roasted cauliflower, a very, very simple process. I actually have two cauliflower heads of cauliflower. One was purple and one was white. It was just too pretty when I saw that purple one not to use it. And I just stuck this into the oven at 400 for a total of about 40 minutes. You can use a little salt and pepper on it, a little Cajun seasoning, or just avoid that if you're avoiding salt. Um, and then I'm just going to put half of a cup approximately, not even measuring, just a nice big spoonful in here of this mixture. You could use broccoli instead. Something kind of cruciferous makes it, um, again, just a powerfully nutritious combination here. And then I'm also going to add some red beans. And this is just literally a can of small red beans that are a little smaller than a kidney bean. I like them a little better than kidney beans to um, add to this because the skins of the beans are more tender. And so literally this is how easy it was. It was a, a can of small red beans that I rinsed and drained and added to that a small can eight ounce of tomato sauce. I just cooked that on the stove until it got kind of thick and uh, you know, sort of rich and thick in its texture. And now I'm gonna add that. So we've got some beans in here along with the rice and the cooked and raw vegetables and the sweet potatoes. And so it's just lots of great flavors and colors. And then I'm going to add some sauteed peppers and onions. Sometimes I add to this, um, again, I just roasted this in the oven for a total of about half an hour, 25 minutes to 35 minutes of a couple of red bell peppers and an onion. Sometimes to that, I might add zucchini, I might add a jalapeno. And again, I'm just kind of adding a spoonful of it, a nice big spoonful to get some nice color and flavor. And again, you can, you can add some seasoning to this, a little Italian seasoning, or a little bit of um, you know, any kind of herb that you like. And now again, for a little freshness, I'm adding some cilantro. So I just have some cilantro leaves that I've cut up and I'm just adding this for some fresh flavor on top. And we've got all of our beautiful colors and flavors. And to this now, just for a little Topping, you could add some hummus or something else, but I'm adding just a little bit of almond yogurt. This one's made by Kite Hill. It's plain and unsweetened. And it's my favorite for this kind of savory, um, you know, a little bit of creamy. Now we've got some creamy, some spicy, some crunchy, some, um, you know, just a little bit of everything. And it's all ready to enjoy. And I call it our happy power bowl. Looks and delicious. that's that. That looks delicious, Vicki. I want that. So next thing I'm making is, uh, it was actually, I saw this on uh, Gina De Laurentiis show, not known for making vegan food, but uh, she made the dish that was very easy to modify. And that's why I encourage you, a lot of dishes can be made plant-based with simple swaps. So with this one, it is a, it's an Italian dish and it's got quinoa, which is a pseudo grain. People put it in the grain category, but it's actually a seed. It's got a lot of, you know, it's really powerful, good protein, fiber, all that. And it's got, uh, they call it chichi beans. That's the same as garbanzo or chickpeas, but that's the Italian name for it. Uh, carrots and celery and tomatoes and onion and garlic and a lot of different herbs. Um, and I wanted to say, like, they do recommend, if you've been hearing about the gut microbiome, that one way to help 
improve the health of it is to eat a, a great variety of foods. And I recommend getting at least 30 a week, 30 different foods. This dish right here has 15 different ones because the, the broth I'm using has leeks. It's got all the other things, but it's got leeks too. So that makes 15 different foods. So that's half, you're halfway there with the soup. And it's got a lot of different colors, like that beautiful dish Vicki just made. You want to eat as many colors as you can because you're getting all the different phytonutrients when you eat the rainbow. So uh, I want to point out a couple things. Like I said before, if you don't want to use the fresh herbs, you can use dry and use a third of the amount. Um, the hardier herbs, like the thyme and the oregano, can withstand being put in at the beginning of the cooking process. But the other things like the basil or parsley are too delicate and they should be put in at the end. I have white wine. Um, I wanna point out too that you think wine is from grapes, should be vegan, but if you're an ethical vegan, I want you to know that they often clarify wine with egg whites or will strain it through fish bladders. And I don't wanna know how somebody got the idea to put the wine through a fish bladder, but that happens. And Trader Joe's, there are a lot of different vegan wines, and Trader Joe's has a number of them, so that's what I have. I have a dry white wine from Trader Joe's, and it is, when you cook it, it cooks all the al alcohol off, so there isn't a problem with that. Uh, if it's a trigger for you or a problem, don't you don't need to add it. You can omit it, but it doesn't, the alcohol content is totally gone with the cooking process. So the other thing I wanted to say with the fresh herbs, you can make them last longer by cleaning them, patting them dry, wrapping them in a moist paper towel, putting them into a plastic bag or a dish towel or something like a silicone uh, storage container so that you can keep them longer. You can also freeze them, like you know, cutting them up and putting them into ice cube trays with a little bit of water in there. They're not gonna look as pretty after, but they're still gonna taste really good. So that's one tip. Uh, you can make your own vegetable stock you know, using the scraps um, from your vegetables when you prepare them. Sometimes you just have to let others, like get your, uh, set your priorities. And for me, I was gonna, not gonna do that. I have a hard time moving my hand. So uh, I use this Trader Joe's brand, which doesn't have any oil. It's an, I'm oil free. I like to use this kind of thing. Pacific is another one that doesn't use oil. And I've got my, um, canned chickpeas, you can make yours in that instant pot or on the stove, however you'd like. It does call, the recipe uh, starts with, you know, adding the vegetable broth or whatever you're going to use to cook. You can use oil if that's your thing. I don't like to use the oil and in the, with the ratatouille, most recipes I saw for that have at least a quarter of a cup of oil, at least. So that is almost 500 calories right there and our bodies don't recognize it as a fat because it's been stripped of all the nutrients so if you're going to use an oil i'd recommend cutting way back on how much you use so i i use the instant pot because i didn't you can use a dutch oven but this was easier for me to maneuver so i i put it on saute instant pots heat up really quickly so i put it on you know it switches from a low medium and hot it gets hot pretty quickly so you want to keep an eye on that so I sauteed the onions and then uh, the carrots and the celery. I stirred it occasionally. If it's stuck, I always keep some room temperature broth or water handy because I want to deglaze with that. And I don't want to use a cold liquid because that's going to bring the temperature of, of the pan down or the pot right away. So after that, um, I added the herbs again and the garlic. And that's like, again, to get that aroma kicked up a little bit by putting just the, the sturdy ones and I didn't put the parsley or the basil in yet. And then after a bit, put the tomatoes in, the rose, the um, cook the tomatoes a bit. And then I added, I don't put the basil and the parsley until much later than this recipe shows because I like to add that very last minute. You're always gonna take the these herbs out after you've cooked them. You don't wanna leave them in when you're serving. And then the other thing, because this recipe has you cook the quinoa in the soup. Now you can do that if you'd like to. You could also cook it ahead if you're batching and you make quinoa and you could just use some of that and put that in at the right time, like 10 minutes later than the recipe shows, or you could buy frozen quinoa. Sometimes we need some time saving steps for whatever reason, time or energy savings. So I think either one of those work really well. And then, um, 
I let it, I put it in the, after it cooked for about 40 minutes, I took a cup out, I put it in the food processor, let that puree to thicken up the soup. It does get pretty thick. It does make quite a bit. That quinoa really soaks up, it swells up the longer it's been in there. So I have, um, and I've listed everything, the quinoa. And then I'm going to show you after that how to make a plant-based Parmesan cheese. So that is my next step. And for people, I've got this cool little slide out drawer. I just love this. I don't know if it's going to knock it off, but it has, it makes it easy. You can put your appliances at the back under your cover, then just pull it out super easily. So it's easier and there's no strain. And what I'm doing is I've got, is this is a very simple thing. It does, you can put nori in it, but I never have. I just like it uh, this way. It's just Walnuts, although if you're avoiding walnuts, you can use any nut or seed that you like. I like using walnuts because they're high in omega-3 fatty acids. So I've got a cup of those that I'm putting in. And then a quarter cup of nutritional yeast. It gives it that nice cheesy taste. And I do use the fortified plan to get more B vitamins. I've got a teaspoon of garlic powder. And I never use as much salt as they say. So it's a half teaspoon. I use about a quarter. I'm going to make a racket and just uh, process this. You want, to, you want to do it enough so that you don't have any chunks of walnut, but not so much that you have walnut butter. I keep this in the refrigerator. I usually will put it, I, do. Um, I usually put it in a shaker container so I, we can just put it, we put it on our uh, pasta all the time. That adds a nice tamami flavor in there. And you know, we do love it. That is very versatile. So I'm going to scoop this out. Here, four. wasn't my most uh, even cuts with the um, the vegetables here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of um, parsley on top of that. A little bit. Parmesan. Just so you can see what Parmesan looks like. You're not going to trick anybody in a blind taste test, but it's good. I really like it. I go a little bit more parsley. This has got, like I said, with the broth, it's got 15 different types of foods, a lot of different colors, a lot of fiber, a lot of protein. It's packed with phytonutrients. One of the things about these herbs, they have a lot of antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory properties. The thyme is also good for your brain, so is the oregano. And there is um, a product called Benefect, which is used by professional remediation companies to uh, kill mold and bacteria. And it's made just of thyme oil and lemon oil. So that's how powerful those are for antimicrobials. And there you go. It's the finished dish. It's very filling. It smells good. Tastes good. I hope you'll try it and like it. Back to you, Vicki. Thank you, Michelle. That looks really good. Um, the last dish that I'm making today is a dessert. And it's a baked blueberry and peach crumble. And these fruits are just really in season right now and in abundance. So it's a nice way to use them in our menu. But actually, you can swap out any 
fruits you like throughout the year. So you could use strawberries early in the summer or, you know, move into the apple and pears as we get more into fall. Anything really works. And you could even use frozen vegetable or frozen fruits, but I'm sticking with the fresh ones right now. And I've got, um, so again, we're using fresh blueberries, fresh peaches. And what I did was actually make one a little earlier so that I'll be able to show you how this looks finished because it does bake in the oven for about 45 minutes. So I actually made half of a recipe that I'm going to show you before and I'll make another half now. So in your own kitchen, if you're making this, you'll have twice the amount um, if you're making a full recipe. So instead of a quart, I'm actually using a pint of fresh blueberries that have been rinsed and dried and about two and a half peaches is what it turned out to be. So around five for a full pound. So about two and a half right now. And I'm just putting them into together into this bowl. And then my sauce is this simple. It's just half of a jar in this case. And I'm even using a little less than that of pure peach fruit spread. So if there's no sugar added. It's just a fruit sweetened um, fruit spread. So I'm adding that to this and instead of although I say a whole jar you can really use a little less so it's kind of up to you how much you want to use I'm going to use probably all together um a seven eighths of the, the jar you know three quarters something like that so now I'm just going to give this a little stir to have this delicious sweet jelly mix with the fruit and again if you wanted to add less you sure could um, this, what's also fun about this is you can vary your fruit spread. So you can use strawberry with your, uh, you know, a different kind of berry mixture. You can use red raspberry, blueberry, and so on. And I've actually made a combination earlier in the summer of strawberry and peach a number of times, sometimes using the peach fruit spread and sometimes strawberry, and it gives it a very different profile and it's just fun. So, and it's extremely easy. This is just fresh fruit, a little bit of jelly, and this is going to go into your baking pan. I usually make this in either um, a pie pan, like a ceramic or glass pie pan or in an eight inch square. But again, you can kind of use anything you like. And so just because I'm making half a recipe this time, I'm using little individual this is Fiesta Ware, so it can go into the oven. Little, you know, custard cups, something like whatever would work for you. Um, and I'm just going to spoon some of this fruit into this mixture. So this will turn into little individual portions of this dessert. And what's fun about something like this, not only that it's this easy, but it's nice to take to like a potluck or um, serve, you know, on a little dessert bar at a holiday again kind of making it a very um, making this with anything that feels kind of in season and then we're going to make the topping in just a second but this is how easy this is we're just adding our fruit to our bowls we're going to be baking this at 350 for around 45 minutes so we'll just set that aside and I'll put that into another kind of container in a moment. And now we'll make our topping. But this is gonna be fun to bake at 350 for again, 45 minutes. So now we're going to make our easy topping. And if you wanted to save time, you could just put a little granola on the top when you're done. But I'm making just kind of my own little crumble with oats. So I'm starting with one cup of oats instead of the two cups that's part of the recipe with some cinnamon, a little bit of baking powder. And since I'm not adding any oil I, or butter or you know non-dairy butter, nothing like that, I'm adding actually a banana that's mashed, in this case, three quarters of a banana because the whole recipe is one and a half. And a little bit of non-dairy milk. I'm using um, some soy milk, a quarter cup here, the recipe is saying half a cup. But what I'm also saying here is you can use any kind of milk you like, any kind of you know, non-dairy milk. So if you prefer an almond milk or rice milk or something like that, it could be sweetened or non-sweetened. This is just plain unsweetened um, milk. 
um, soy milk, as I said, that is um, very simple. And then a little bit of a splash of vanilla. You could add a little almond extract if you wanted. I'm adding a sprinkle of salt. You could leave that out if you wanted to. And I'm just mixing this up. So it's not a very wet batter because our only moisture is that tiny bit of the vanilla and a very little bit of milk. So it's not super wet. So you gotta give it a couple of rounds here of a nice stir. You could also, if you wanted to, instead of the cinnamon, change up the spices and use an apple pie spice or a pumpkin spice. All of those will add a little different kind of flavor po profile, which will be nice and interesting. And then um, we're just gonna put a little bit of topping on the top. So excuse my fingers here. I would use gloves if I was making this for anyone other than our family. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this topping on top. You can put as much or as little as you want. It just looks like this, kind of like a bowl of oatmeal. And then we'll just bake this in the oven. Just kind of depends how much of this topping you wanted. You could even add more sweetener. I don't have any sweetener in here because the base is nice and sweet with the jelly and the fruit. But if you wanted to add some date syrup or maple syrup or something like that to this topping, you could do that as well. And I'm not using all of it, but you could if you wanted to. And then I'll just show you what this looks like before we pop this into the oven. Here we go. They're all ready to bake. And this is what it looks like finished. This one is still warm from the oven and it looks like this. I'm just going to plate that for you so you can see what that looks like. It just really smells great. I don't have the right spoon handy here, so we're, I'm struggling with the spatula, so bear with me. This is wonderful, just as it is, nice and gooey and sweet and beautiful. Or you could add a little bit of non-dairy ice cream over the top or a nice cream made with just fruit. And it looks just like that. And that's our blueberry peach crumble. And then the pan has a little bit of, you can see the juices in the bottom. It's just delicious and the fruit's all soft. The peaches get kind of purple. And again, it looks like that. And that's that. 45 minutes of 350. Looks delicious, Vicki. And it's just, I was thinking vanilla uh, ice cream or plant-based ice cream, you said it. So that looks really delicious. What's your favorite you. for the what's your favorite combination? I haven't met a combination I don't like yet. Right. I really love the peaches, I must say. So whenever I can use the peaches right now, I mean really enjoying that. But I've made it with nectarines earlier this summer and as I mentioned, different kind of berries. And um, yeah, I'm really liking the I'm really liking this combination that I'm making for you tonight. Good. Thank you both so much. Everything you made looks so delicious as always. Um, we'll get to the Q&A in just a moment. If anyone has questions about the recipes or I feel like just, you know, if you're, if you're new to plant-based eating and you kind of have some questions in general, um, Michelle and Vicki are extremely knowledgeable. So I'm sure they'd be happy to answer some of those questions as well. So feel free to ask your question in the Q&A feature or raise your hand. Um, before that, Sean, do you want to choose the raffle winner for the cookbook? 
Sure. Uh, so I didn't draw names from a hat. I used a random number generator. So the virtual version of drawing names from a hat. Um, but I'm happy to announce uh, that our winner of the cookbook is Hiroko Goto. Uh, so um, if that is you, uh, please uh, send Olivia an email after uh, the event tonight. Uh, and Olivia will make sure that you get your book. Um, Olivia, your email is just olivia at vegmichigan.org, correct? Yes, correct. So O-L-I-V-I-A at vegmichigan.org. Awesome. So I'll congratulations, Hiroko. Email and we'll get you your cookbook. It's great. Vicki, do you want to briefly just like kind of um, scan through your cookbook, show people some of the delicious recipes? She has lots of great photos in there, et cetera. So um, we will be doing one more raffle of her cookbook at the Saturday event. Um, at the Ann Arbor District Library downtown. So if you're joining us for that, maybe you'll win that one. Um, if not, definitely definitely a worthwhile book to purchase. Um, you can find it on Amazon. You can go to annarborvegankitchen.com um, and that'll link you directly, I think, too, as well. I mean, there'll be another link to purchase Vicki's cookbook and she has a bunch of other great recipes on her website as well. Thank you, Olivia. And I would just like to say a little shout out to um, Book Suite in Ann Arbor. They do carry it if you would like to buy local and also Kitchen Loft in Carytown. Both have my cookbook in stock right now, as far as I know. So um, and yeah, so uh, it's a, over 100 recipes and each one does have a photo. And I'd love to um, have you have that so that you can make all these easy recipes as well. Wonderful. I just would like to add one little quick thing. And that was that Michelle was mentioning the 30, how great it is to try to get 30 or more foods in uh, ingredients in your meals throughout the week. Between us tonight, we used about 30, you know, maybe 28, something like that between us. So these recipes will get you well on your way to getting that 30 in for the week. Absolutely. That's great. Thank you both. Um, all right, Sean, it looks like we have some questions so far. Are you? Yeah, I am seeing uh, that Jean-Luc Sabil, and forgive me if I mispronounce that, um, has their hand raised. So I am going to allow you to talk uh, to ask your question. Uh, green Hey, greetings, Michelle. Greetings, Vicky. Uh, my name is John Luke. I'm from I'm from uh, Stony Brook University. I'm I'm here right now on campus studying electrical engineering. Going to be graduating next May. Good to see you guys. So, Vicky, I, I got a question for you. Like, you see, you mentioned something about like um your desserts, like baking for 45 minutes. Um, I, I would like to. I, I kind of was wondering how does adding granola cut down the cooking time, um, in in, in, in that in that respect. I would like to know like how how it how it like saves time. Because you mentioned something about like adding granola, if you want to say time, add granola, something like that. Okay, well, that's a fair question. And what I really meant by that was if you wanted to avoid the trouble of making the topping, you could just bake the fruit and kind of add the granola towards the end or at the end after your fruit is baked. So it's really oh. more just of an idea in case you wanted to really, you know, kind of turn this into a little more streamlined process in just combining fruit, baking that, and then topping it with something crunchy that you already have on hand. And I always recommend a homemade granola because you can control what's in it. Oh, okay. So, because I, I should have, I should have, I didn't ask like, like if it's either what are homemade or what do you buy like the granola from the store or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I actually do make homemade um, granola. I love granola. I love it in something like this or over my own oatmeal that I might make in the morning or, um, you know, as a little topping for um, with yogurt and fresh fruit, something like that. So I love to have granola on hand. And I actually do have a couple of recipes for granola in my book, but um, and on my website as well. So I, I do like to make them oil free and without any added refined sugar, I use date syrup instead in one of my recipes, um, at least and you know, you can make it without any sweetener at all and just add fruit like bananas or um, dates, raisins, things like that. So there's different ways you can do it, but I do try to make it. I do make it, I should say, I more than try, but I use just fruit as my sweetener. Oh, okay. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, th th thanks, th thanks for that. I was, that yeah, I, I got confused. 
I got really confused of, of when you mentioned about, about like you know adding granola, like saving time when if we add that. They, yeah, but thanks for thanks for answering that question. I, I can I'm gonna pass it to anybody else who's got a question. I'll ask more later. Yeah. Thanks for the question. Yeah, thank you, John. Luke. You're welcome. All right. Um, I, it looks like we have a couple of questions in the uh, Q and A text function as well. Um, so we have a question here. Uh, I don't care for the taste of wine. Would you suggest substituting apple juice, white grape juice, water, or just omitting it entirely? You can just omit it. You don't have to put it in. It just adds a, a flavor that you don't have to have at all. So that's simple. One less thing to put in. And you could put a little bit more water or broth if you think it needs it. It's three quarters of a cup of the wine. So if it's getting a little thick, you can add a little more broth or wine. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we have a question here from Alex. Uh, interested in neither of you using oil, is that mostly because of the calories? Um, so I'll just, Michelle has lots to say on this topic as well. Um, and it's actually kind of controversial. Not everyone believes that's best for everyone, but I do stay away from oil for reasons of calories as well as for um, a heart healthy choice that I believe is best. Um, but again, not everyone agrees about this, but for me, it's the right choice to avoid oil because it's an inflammatory for our endothelial cells in our artery. So that's in my view, it is considered um, a heart healthy choice and that's why I do it. Michelle? Yeah, so it, there isn't a lot of consensus and things change as more research comes out. So there are more doctors who are okay with some, but like I was saying before, a quarter cup is a lot. And when you have an oil, our brain doesn't recognize that as a fat so that you know we're not satisfying that um, the receptors that want the rich foods. So. You can use, um, not planning on what to do, we're all different points of the journey. I'll be honest, that was the hardest thing for me to give up. I tried to justify it every which way, but it's organic, it's olives, they're plants. And then I finally, because the research then was working very strongly that it is pro-inflammatory, it's devoid of most nutrients because they're stripped out when the, the oil is being made. But um, I found that after when I finally did give it up and then I had it again, my lips would feel greasy. I just didn't feel as well. I know some people have, uh, had it when they went to a restaurant and had achy joints the next day. So I think you can really get used to not having it. There's so many different ways to sub out for it. And, you know, I, I asked this question in a class once and I was surprised. I was taught never put oil down the drain, you know, and that's a big problem like for restaurants getting rid of their oil. Oil kind of does the same thing. Like in a, when you put it down a drain, it starts clinging to the sides and things start, you know, other food particles cling to the side and then it gets clogged and you need a plumber. Well, in our bodies, that's plumbers usually comes in the form of a cardiologist. So I don't use it. I mean, there are doctors who do, and maybe like the Sure's Eyes will recommend a little spritz of a, an avocado oil or a canola oil. So just hardly, I think even Dr. Is it Dr. Esselstyn who uses a little bit in a baking sheet? But there are ways, whichever one, no, there's somebody who does. I just like in a, a baking pan, but just a little tiny spritz of a, of a spray, but not, you know, tablespoon or around the pan, how you see that on cookie shows. I'll go around the pan. I'm going to say Dr. Barnard, I'm going to say, allows just a teeny bit. Uh, I'm. It was someone that surprised me, but I don't, I don't remember. The point is, you know, it was just a spritz. And Dr. James Lewis said it's to get a serving, like you have to do it for an eighth of a second, that's all, which is hard to do. So again, a lot of different theories about it. And, you know, you do what you feel best about. Yeah, I'll just add to that, Michelle, that a lot of people who are even trying to lower their amount of oil for whatever combination of reasons find it hard, like you said, an eighth of a second is kind yeah. of close to impossible. So mm -hmm. people end up often when they're eating, adding oil to their foods, getting more than they intend. Mm -hmm. And so that can have, you know, whatever consequences may result might not be what you intended. So um, I personally, just my own testimonial, I also had a hard time when I first went vegan, rather than, you know, plant based, many people feel like the diff there's a slight difference in the wording, um, meaning that you're eating more of the whole foods and not just the refined foods. 
some people consider oil and ex, a refined processed food that comes from that whole avocado or that whole olive. And we'd rather maybe eat that whole olive with all the fiber and the rest of the nutrients than just the oil without all of that, the other good stuff that might come along with that olive. Um, and just my own testimonial is what I started to say. My own cholesterol dropped like 50 points when I um, stopped using oil because I was trying to defend using oil because it's so good, it tastes so good. And so I was cooking with it even after I was vegan. But when I finally gave it up and used water instead or some other kind of um, substitute, I, I feel better. And actually digestion is better. Just everything just is, I like it better. But again, it's a very personal choice and whatever works for you. And the other thing, like a good nonstick pan, like a scan pan or other pans that make it a lot easier to cook without oil. So. Great. Thank you both. Mm -hmm. uh, this next question, I think, uh, is more of a question for you, Olivia. Uh, is there a virtual link for the event on Saturday? There's not a virtual link. It is just a live event. Um, so join us live in person at the Ann Arbor District Library. Great, thank you. Uh, next question, I think I can actually answer. Um, will we receive a written version of the recipes from today? Uh, yes, uh, you. Uh, if you go back and check your email that you received this morning, or even one of the ones that you received earlier in the week, uh, in that schedule of all the events, um, where it lists out uh, tonight's event, uh, there's a link in there that goes to a, a Google Doc that has all of those recipes. Uh, also, you can go to the website uh, a2gov.org slash plant challenge, uh, and you can find that same link to the Google Doc on there. Uh, all right, we have a question here for Vicki from Ed. Uh, it says, what can you use to substitute for the bananas in the crumble? Um, you know, the bananas are there for sweetness and moisture. So you could use applesauce instead or mango or um, really any fruit probably, um, but that's kind of its purpose. So if you're avoiding bananas and want to use a different fruit, something that's kind of soft and creamy, mango is often a good substitute for people who can't eat bananas. Right, but applesauce you. definitely would work as well. Yeah, or any or any pureed um, could be pumpkin or you know, all that it wouldn't be sweet. But yeah, you could use really any kind of pureed fruit. Great, thank you. Um, we have a question here from Cecilia. Uh, are there any general rules of thumb for modifying recipes to make them plant based? Yeah, it depends on what the dish is, but there are a lot of things, and it depends what you're trying. Uh, some things can just be omitted. Some, you know, it, like there are a lot of different plant-based, uh, you know, ways to make a bacon flavor, like through tempeh or eggplant. You can use a lot of different things to recreate that. Um, it really depends. You know, people will use tofu uh, scrambles instead of eggs. And there are just so many, it kind of depends on, can you, maybe, can you give me an idea of what dish you're thinking of? Um, we will see if Cecilia types in a dish, um, but um, Vicki, did you have uh, any kind of general rules of thumb while we're waiting to see if Cecilia has a dish in mind? Well, I would agree with Michelle that it kind of depends. Um, the, the, the answers are probably kind of broad because there is kind of a substitute for just about everything. Um, and there's more, more creative ideas out there all the time. So where we used to feel like what is there's no substitute for egg whites. Now there's something that we call aquafaba, which is the liquid that is in um, a can of chickpeas or that's cooked with chickpeas. Um, for example, and, um, you know, there's a non-dairy version for cream cheese and for many other kinds of cheeses and the Parmesan that Michelle made and um, many meat substitutes and, uh, you know, plant-based versions of hamburgers and, and so forth and all kinds of non-dairy milks. You can make ice cream or buy ice cream that's non-dairy now. So there's kind of a workaround for just about everything. And it's a bit of a learning curve if this is brand new to you to kind of figure out some solutions that work for you. Sometimes a little trial and error because there may be some particular product that you don't love and you wanna try a different version of it out there. So, um, but the answer is there's something there I would say for, uh, just, I can't think of anything that there wouldn't, I mean, there's people use jackfruit instead of, you know, pork for all kinds of fun ways to make sandwiches. And um, yeah, I kind of feel like this is a really great time to be becoming vegan because there's something there for everybody. 
right? And that just made me think of all the other things like parts of palm, if they're sustainably sourced, you can use that for different seafood substitutes or banana blossom can be used for fish and chips. And there are just so many things. And some are healthier than others, like the whole food plant-based versions are going to be you know, more likely a healthier option, but they're just all sorts of other things. My family loves just egg. It's a mung bean, uh, but it cooks up just like scrambled eggs and they love that. So certain things really help transitioning go smoother. You know, so, but it, like I said, if you, if she did uh, write anything else, we would love to give a more specific answer, but it, it, it really depends on what you're doing. And like Vicki said, there's pretty much an answer for anything. Some things do affect the cooking time or, in the moisture levels, so you might have to make adjustments, but that information is out there too. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Cecilia gave the example of, uh, for example, the Italian soup that you modified, um, kind of like that genre of, of soups. Um, where did maybe what uh, did that soup originally have in it that you modified to make it well, plant based? I think it had like a chicken stock in it and it used regular Parmesan. And, you know, I'm just so used to have a lot of allergies, so I've been making substitutions forever. But it just um, that was that was pretty easy. And like I used a vegan wine, but I think that was pretty much the cheese and the kind of stock. So stocks are so simple to switch out. You just buy a vegetable stock, and then uh, like Vicky was saying, uh, the Parmesan or other kinds of cheeses can be swapped very easily. They're really a soup is very easy to to substitute for. Yeah, and sometimes you just leave the meat or something that's you know on, on the offensive list for you that you're trying to avoid. You just leave it out, and mm -hmm. in many cases, that's just just as good or better. Of course, I mean it's better in a million ways, but um, you know it it won't um, in any way impact negatively the flavor. Just leave it out and add something more, some other seasoning or some other you know flavor or more vegetables instead. And, um, you know, I mentioned pretty much every dairy product just about now, eggs is not a dairy product, but it's a refrigerated product. But that's a great example of a, a way that people who are looking for a substitute for eggs can, and there's other versions too, people make with in baking, you can use a, what we call a flax egg, which is some flax meal and water. There's people substitute, um, you know, all kinds of different things for the eggs in baking or just leave them out. And that tends to work just fine too. So there's lots of fun ways to, um, and it becomes really fun and kind of a, a challenge to sometimes um, figure out what the best combination is, avoiding everything that you are seeking to avoid and still making it taste fabulous and, um, and better for you and you feel better after. So I just invite you to try this if this is new to you because I think it will be the best decision you ever make. Agree. Uh, all right, well, uh, we have a couple of minutes. We have uh, one last question in here um, from Alex again. Uh, I know you, you all mentioned um, using water or a nonstick pan. Are there other oil substitutes that you would recommend? For cooking that is because like Vicki said, there are a ton of different substitutes in baking that wouldn't translate to using for cooking, you know, in a pan. So I, Usually like for cooking, I will use like a hot pan and room temperature food so that you get a nice hot pan. You can let the food cook for a bit and then move it around, deglaze it with the water, broth, wine, different, different things, different liquids can be used uh, with baking. There are a ton of different substitutes, but I think, you know, really getting yourself set up for the right equipment that help you use less oil. I'm trying to think of what else. There are things like the aquafaba. You can make salad dressings very easily without um, oil. It's like I said, I, I don't like the taste anymore. It just gets my makes my lips feel greasy, and it's harder. To, it's so much easier to wash your dishes when you don't use oil too. But um, you know, using one of my favorite dressings is a creamy mustard dressing that uses a cashew base. You could also use sunflower seeds if you don't want to use cashews or you have a tree nut allergy. You can make things creamy with chia seeds. There's so many different options. So just doing a little bit of, like it's fun to look them up and see all the different ways you can make things without oil. There's a lot of information out there. And Vicki's cookbook doesn't use any oil. So there's a good start right there. Great. 
Uh, well, that brings us to time. So uh, thank you both so much. Um, really looking forward to trying some of these recipes, especially that blueberry and peach uh, crumble, because those are my two favorite fruits. So I definitely <laughs> want to try that one out. <laughs> um, Olivia, thank you so much for being here as well. Did you have anything uh, to say at the end here? No, nope, that's it. Just thank you again for having us. And thank you, Vicki and Michelle, for the great demo. Thank you for having us. Really appreciate it. Thank you it. for having us. Great to be with you. And thank you awesome. for what you do. Appreciate that with sustainability. It's so important. So. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, and again, Hiroko, uh, please feel free to email Olivia to claim your uh, cookbook that you won. Um, and uh, as a reminder to everyone, we will be having our restaurant panel discussion tomorrow evening uh, at the same time at seven o'clock. Uh, that will be with uh, restaurant owners from El Harissa, uh, Venology, and Cineholic Bakery. Uh, they'll be talking about uh, where they get their ingredients, uh, how they added plant-based uh, menu items on their menus, uh, all kinds of fun stuff uh, about uh, kind of looking into the, the inside of the restaurant business. Um, so I uh, hope you all, all will join us for that. Uh, otherwise, I hope that everyone has a great night. Thanks so much. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.